Greetings my beautiful lovelies, it's Emmy. welcome back. Today I'm going to be starting a new series called Pantry Eats or something like that. I'm not exactly sure what the series is going to be called at this point, but it's a series of recipes that are going to use ingredients that you can find in your pantry. We are going through unprecedented times, uncharted territory at this point. There's a lot of anxiety, worry, and concern, rightly so. So I thought this series might be helpful for many of you that are hunkering down like us, not going out, not doing any shopping, self-distancing. What do I cook? What can I make? What can I use out of my pantry? What do I put in my pantry? So hopefully this recipe series will be helpful to you. Let me know down in the comments if so, or if there are specific things you'd like me to make. So I'm super excited about this recipe. It's a classic Japanese recipe. It may not sound like it. It's called spaghetti napolitan, or sometimes napolitan. And it's a pasta dish that uses ketchup. So the origin story goes, this recipe comes from the 1950s post-war. It was created by a chef at the New Grand Hotel in Yokohama. And the chef was inspired by the spaghetti he saw Americans eating. It became wildly popular and it still is today. Kids love this. Oftentimes when you go to a restaurant, you'll see spaghetti napolitan on the kids menu for children because kids love it. And it is delicious, absolutely delicious. It sounds a little bit strange, but if you think about what ketchup is composed of, tomato paste, corn syrup, vinegar, it's not that big of a stretch. So let's go ahead and make this. So my recipe is gonna be an amalgam of recipes I research, and I'll put all their links down below in the description. They include Cooking with Doug, Tabi Eats, Just One Cookbook, Japanese Cooking 101, all great references, and I will put all their links down in the description. So this recipe includes some fresh ingredients that you may or may not have or may not choose to put them in your dish. It's completely adaptable. Make it your own. I would say the two most important ingredients are probably going to be the ketchup and the pasta. And if you have this combination, it reminds me a lot of June's or Honey Boo Boo's Sketty. Have you seen that video? I'll put the link down below. So I've got my water coming up to the boil over here. And in that time, I'm going to prepare my vegetables. So I'm going to need half a small onion. This is actually more of a medium onion. Onions and potatoes are great things to have in your pantry. They keep for a while and you can use them in so many different recipes. And we're just going to slice this up. And then we're going to take half a bell pepper. Finally slice that. Next I got a couple of mushrooms. If you don't like mushrooms you can mitt them. If you've got canned mushrooms perfectly fine as well. I'm just going to slice those. One huge clove of garlic. I think I'm just gonna use half of that. I'm gonna use my garlic press for that. For protein, you can add a couple little sausages, you can add some bacon, you can add some ham. Today, I'm gonna add two slices of bacon. Here's a little tip that I've been doing recently in the kitchen that's been really great for cleanup and for preventing cross-contamination. So I've been using sheets of parchment paper that I double up. And whenever I'm dealing with raw meats, I've been preparing and cutting them on my paper. Some people have these plastic cutting boards. I don't, I find them hard to cut on and slippery. I don't really like them. I like cutting on wood, but then you can get contamination in your cutting board. So what I've been doing is doubling up parchment sheets. And in this case, I'm using bacon. And because it's doubled up, it doesn't cut through the parchment as readily. So I scrub and clean my cutting board as usual, but I don't have to worry about the cross-contamination of raw meats with my vegetables. So growing up watching cooking shows, they always said to bring a bunch of boiling water to a boil to cook pasta. But according to Kenji Lopez Alt, he says that that's not true. You can still cook pasta in the same amount of time, equally as well, in a small amount of water. That's so great because in college, I was always cooking pasta in small amounts of water and always thinking, oh no, Lydia Bastianich is looking over me and giving me the stink eye. But no, it's totally okay. Yay, let's do it. Okay, so I've got some pasta about this much. That's probably an inch in diameter. This is probably two servings. And I'm gonna do this. Can I do it? How do they do that? No, that didn't work. I was trying to do that whole like fan thing. like. They go, they go like this, they go. Yeah, how did they do that? They go. <laughs> oh, really? Do they just, I think they just twist it. Or not. Just put it in the water. Heat up some olive oil. Now I'm gonna add my bacon. Bacon. 
Next, we're going to add our onions. This recipe is an amount for about two people. You can, of course, scale this up if you're serving more. Our garlic. Shrooms. Oh, it smells so good! And our peppers. So you're going to let the vegetables soften up a little bit. If your kids are like my kids and they like their vegetables a little bit on the softer side, then you can cook them, of course, a little bit longer. But as adults, I like my vegetables to be a little bit crunchier. I'm going to use a couple tablespoons of pasta water to kind of deglaze the pan. Get all those good bits. And now we're going to add the star of the show, some ketchup. Ready? Here we go. One, two. Of course you can adjust this to your taste, but it really is a delicious combination. Add a little bit more. So our sauce is almost done. Add a pinch of salt and some cracked pepper. I'm not even going to bother to drain this. The little pasta water that's on the pasta will help make the sauce. So easy and delicious. Okay, I'm not letting go of those stragglers. We're going to add a few pats of butter because butter is delicious. Swirl this in here. Now, make this your own. I'm gonna add a little bit more ketchup. Total amount of ketchup in this was probably about three to four tablespoons. And once all our butter is melted, we are ready to eat. <laughs> I find tongs the best way to deal with long noodles. Take a pinch, put them in the middle, give them a little twisty twisty. See, boop, we need some peppers, need some mushrooms. If you got it and if you like it, add some Parmesan. Green stuff in the shaker can works too. Again, if you got it and if you like it, a little bit of parsley. Oh. have it, the classic spaghetti napolitan. Oh, isn't it beautiful and so easy to put together. Itadakimasu. So good. It's absolutely delicious. The ketchup works so beautifully in this dish. It adds a little bit of tanginess. Of course, it has that tomato flavor, kind of a tomato concentrate flavor like tomato paste, but then it has some sweetness in there. The added pasta water makes this saucy so it's not sticky at all. And that little bit of sweetness in there is really nice. Okay, I'm gonna get a bite with some vegetables. Mm. The mushrooms have that really succulent bite to them and really great mushroomy flavor. Now I'm gonna have some with bell pepper. Do not knock it till you try it. Ketchup, spaghetti, scrumptious. Mmm. Mm, mm, mm. I got a little smoky bacon in that bite. So good. Alrighty, so there you have it. An absolutely delicious meal made with ingredients you probably have in your pantry or in your crisper drawer. Let me know down in the comments if you like this type of video, if you want to see others, if there are any recipes that you like me to test out and try, I'm all ears. And yeah, be well, be safe, hunker down. We will get through this. Know that I am thinking of you. And yeah, take care of yourselves. And I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye. Yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah.